Hello everyone, this is MJ with Min.io. Welcome back to the Min.io and Kubernetes course. In this section, we are continuing to do the lab setup. Again, if you do not need to do a lab setup, if you already have a running Kubernetes environment that you can use to deploy Min.io, then you can skip this part. But the section that we're on is the option two of installing a Kubernetes cluster. In this case, we would be using K3D. And in order to use K3D, you have to have Docker installed. So Docker is only required if you plan to use K3D. And please note that if you chose option one, then you would have installed K3S, as you see on the screen right now. But if you are using option two and you want to deploy a multi-node cluster on a single Linux host to test Min.io, then you can use K3D. So we're going to walk through the Docker install specifically on Ubuntu, since that's what we recommend we, you use for this lab environment. And let's jump over to the documentation because it changes at times. And I'd like you to follow the official documentation for your install instead of what I put on the screen here. So here we are at the Docker install documentation for Ubuntu. Uh, please note that you don't have to do all of these steps, but you should certainly do most of them. So the main thing is, is that you need to make sure that there are no older Docker components installed uh, using other methods because that will cause conflicts in your system. So that's this line right here. And then you'll need to set up a repository. So you'll run these commands and install the additional packages necessary to run Docker. You'll add the GPG key. This is basically verifying that this package is what it says it is, and it's not installing something malicious on your system. Next, you'll use the following command to add the repository. And once you've added the repository, you'll do an apt-get update. So now those packages are available for install on your system. Lastly, we're going to install the latest version, but you can install a specific version if you like. You just need to specify which specific version, but latest works uh, for the most part from my experience. So I recommend latest. So you'll run this command. And then after that's done, you can test. There's one last piece to this where if you are not running as the root user, you'll need to go down to the bottom here and continue to the post install steps for Linux. This is only if you're not running as root. So you might have pseudo privileges, but you're not running as root. You'll need to do a pseudo group add Docker. And then you will need to do a sudo user mod minus ag docker and then your user that you're actually using. That will allow this user to access the Docker API on your system. If you do not do this and you're running as a user other than root, even if they have sudo privileges, you'll get an error when you try to run Docker commands. So just make note of that. And with that, let's jump over into the demo environment. All right, so here we are in the demo environment. I'm going to go ahead and step through those steps that I just showed you on the Docker documentation page. So the first thing we're going to do is make sure that there are no old components installed on the system. Next, we need to do an update and also get those additional packages that support the Docker installation itself. So we'll go ahead and run that. And you can see that finish pretty quickly. Next, we need to actually add the GPG key to our system so that we can verify that this is actually a valid package that we're installing from Docker. Uh, next piece is to add the repository for where this is gonna get pulled from to our sources. Next, we run a apt-get update, and that's actually gonna pull all the packages listed in this package we just added uh, into the system here and allow us to do the install for that. And the last piece of this is to actually do the install itself of all the components that we need. So the core ones here are Docker CE, the Docker CE CLI and container D, but this also recommends that you install the Docker buildx plugin if you wanna build Docker containers on here and also Docker compose if you wanna use uh, Docker compose on this system. So we'll go ahead and run that and confirm that we do want to install this. So now that that's complete, I am running as root, so I do not need to add my user to the Docker group. But if you're not running as root, make sure you do that. So now we can do a Docker PS and we can see that there is nothing running, but the Docker command comes back and we can run a test of the hello world container. And you can see that that ran successfully. So what this means is we have Docker successfully installed on the system. Again, this is for option two only, so don't install both K3S and Docker on the same system. I would recommend that you do one or the other. You could cause some conflicts there with ports and things if you're trying to run K3S and K3D all on the same host. There are ways to do it, but you'll need to really understand your way around. That's all for this video. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.